Welcome to a very special edition of First Star Logistics in the Trenches with Dave Lapham. Special guest, the legendary Chris Collinsworth. And I mean that uh, the highest compliment possible. I mean, the success you've had as a player, now in the broadcast world, unparalleled, my man. Welcome to the podcast. Somehow I just feel really old after that statement. But thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, man. Let's 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 do a little. This this is your life, Chris Collinsworth. Let's go in the way back machine. I mean, athletic family. Obviously, your dad Abe was uh, one of Rupp's runs at University of Kentucky when you were growing up. Was basketball a priority for you? I know you were an outstanding track and field uh, star as well. What what was your sports interest growing up? Yeah, basketball, hundred percent. My dad was a basketball coach. My brother played at Florida State, um, and I loved it. I, I just was a really average shooter. <laughs> I just <laughs> was. My brother could light it up from anywhere. If he had played in the days of the three-point shot, he would have been all world. Huh. Uh, he was really one of those deep ball shooting from anywhere kind of guys. And so I and I ended up being the, the, the guard and the rebounder. So he was on the left side. If he missed the shot, then I could get it and put it back in. If he got hot, that meant that I only had six or seven points in the day. So that was, that was kind of how it worked in my basketball career. But I went to basketball camps. My dad taught nine consecutive weeks of basketball camps in the summertime wow. uh, in, the, in the state of Florida. And we went to them all. My brother and I went to every single one. So, Man. yeah, basketball was the day. So you go to University of Florida as a quarterback, and you yep. you've got a record that, can only be tied, never be broken. You threw a 99-yard touchdown pass in your quarterback days at Florida, and then you transitioned to the wide receiver uh, position. Was, you know, seeing the game through a quarterback's eyes at the wide receiver position, did that make that transition easier for you? Yeah, I think so. And I, there's quite a few receivers in the league that did that, you know. And, and you just understand some of the nuances of, you know, what it looks like from the other side. And I think in particular zone defenses, yep. you know, where if you, you know, a lot of people, a lot of young receivers want to go down and there's two linebackers and they want to stand right in the middle of them. Well, yep. that's the worst place you can stand because then you give two of them a shot to go get you, right? Mm -hmm. So you go, you go hug up to one of them and give them one side, like an entry pass to the center in basketball. And that makes it a heck of a lot easier. So of course, it was kind of nice back in the day when we had Kenny Anderson teaching me all that stuff, too. So I, I became a genius right away. <laughs> I don't know that I knew it all myself. Tell you, talk about genius. Talk about intelligence. That receiver group, Chris Collinsworth, Pat McAnally, Steve Kreider, my gosh, that was an intelligent room, man. I mean, you guys were splitting the atoms, solving the world's problems on top of playing football. That was a, that was a really bright group, and everybody's been – very successful after football. That was always a big deal with Paul Brown. Football is only the initial stage of your life. What are you going to do after football yourself? Pat McAnally, Steve Kreider, all extremely successful. That was a heck of a group, wasn't it? You know who you throw in there is Isaac Curtis. Yeah. Oh, I mean, right. Isaac was a sharp dude, man. He yep. knew. I, Isaac, I used to crack up with Isaac Curtis. Now, for those of you who don't remember Isaac Curtis, Isaac Curtis really changed the game. He was so fast. Yeah. Isaac Curtis beat in a race in the 100 meters the two guys who represented the United States of America in the Olympics. He beat both of them. And when you brought that kind of speed initially onto the football field, nobody knew what to do with it. So every team basically beat up Isaac Curtis. I mean, they beat him to a pulp yeah. on the outside. And it was legal back in the day. Of course, they changed the rules. and Some will even call it the Isaac Curtis rule. The way they uh, you couldn't you couldn't uh, hit them in five yards down the field and all the different things that happened uh, to him during the course of his of his career. But yeah, he was not only was he great, he was he was great fun. And and we used to joke because Isaac, you know, in training camp, he's not going to go out there. He's in his tenth or eleventh year by the time I get there. Right. And and but then it was like one day he would kind of give you a wink. And he goes, all right, watch this. And he would lay one of his Paul Warfield moves on some <laughs> poor defensive back. And we all just sat there and went, you know, I like, I watched that tape a hundred. I was like, how did you do that? I mean, he, he turned this poor guy into butter. 
And I was like, I go, oh my God. And then he didn't do it again the rest of the training camp because, all right, I made the team. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, talk about uh, speed, though. You you were deceptive. You had, you had the long body, obviously. You had tremendous height and length and everything. But you could run now. I mean, as I recall, didn't you didn't you race Harvey Glance? Didn't you uh, race against Harvey Glance when you ran track and field? Uh, maybe. I, I didn't know who I was running against. I, I did win the hundred in yeah. the state of Florida. State of Florida. I think Harvey Glantz was in that group, wasn't he? Uh, he might have been. I, 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 I'm, you know, I was a junior in high school. They didn't even plan on having me run the hundred. They just threw me in there as like, well, we don't have anybody else. Just go in there. Man, and man. I, I, you know, I was. I don't know what happened. I, <laughs> I, I, I won the prelims and then I won the hundred. And I finished third in the regional, so it wasn't like I'm some favorite coming in there. I just, you know, I don't know. It just got hot at the right time, I guess. Man, you got that adrenaline rush, man. You were, you were ready to rock and roll. There's no doubt. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. The, the, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals have been in the Super Bowl twice. You were one of few players that have played on that played on both of those football teams. Were there more similarities than differences in those two football teams, Chris? A little bit. You know, I, I think probably the similarity was uh, the ability to run the ball in the play action passing game. Yeah. You know, whether yeah. it was Pete Johnson or Archie or whatever, and then Icky and James Brooks in the latter years. But um, it, it really opened up some possibilities with play action. And, and I think Lindy and Flonnie back in 81 was, you know, a little bit ahead of the game. Some of the, the short option routes and the different things that he brought into the offense were uh, really cool. And then Sam Weich and Bruce Coslett cobbled together some great play action schemes. And by that time it was Eddie Brown and uh, Tim McGee. And, and, and I played a little bit, but none of those guys were the stars. And, um, getting in behind safeties that tried to sneak down in the in the run game, um, and you know those guys could really fly. So it, it was uh, you know the the ability to force defenses to play both. I think was was really part of the key of both teams. When you transition to broadcasting, I know I know you're a, you like law. You graduated from law school. I mean, you're an attorney. How does how does the legal background factor into your success today? I know obviously you transitioned to broadcasting. You're doing sports talk, WLW, uh, succeeding Bob Trumpy, and how, how did all that mesh? And was your, the transition as seamless as it appeared to everybody? Well, I, I went to law school because I started when I was playing for the Bengals. Right. I mean, that was actually my last two years. I was already starting law school, but I had to split time, obviously. So it took me five years to graduate. And they said, well, you know, what did you learn in law school? I said, I learned that I didn't want to be a lawyer. Yep. <laughs> yep. It, it, it's, it's hard. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, I, I think the discipline of study is probably what carried over most of broadcasting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, in law school, I mean, you would have 200 pages of notes per class. And the only way I could ever figure out how to do it was to take those 200 pages and condense it to 50 and then condense it to 25 and then condense it to five and memorize those five and go take the test, right? Mm -hmm. Which is kind of the same way that I broadcast football games. So you have all of this stuff, yep. you know, that, that comes at you and you try to read everything. You try to watch everything and PFF and all the different things that I have going on. But at some point, you know what it's like. You got to put it down. And, and, you know, John Madden used to say, all of a sudden, a football game breaks out. Yep. And that was uh, that was exactly how it felt. I got, I got Tony Romo on in the background. I'm watching the first Kansas City champ again. There you go. Um, but, yeah, that was I, – I think that that ability to, to condense information and try and retain as much of it as possible is a big part of what you and I both did. 
So you mentioned PFF, and I know you're a research guy. I know you, you know, you prepare as well or better than anybody that's ever done it. Was uh, the interest in P- PFF based on that, on that uh, thirst for knowledge kind of thing in terms of the sport? Yeah, 100%. I mean, that's really what it was. I, I was, um, <laughs> it was when I, I started doing it. So NBC had asked me to do a post game show after our Sunday night games. I was like, okay. I said, I don't really watch the earlier games. You know, I might see some of the one o'clock games, but I'm still, you know, putting finishing touches on what I'm doing and right. memorizing names and, you know, all, all that stuff. Goes. Yeah. And so I'm kind of watching in the background. And I said, there has to be somebody out there that has a great condensed version of what happened in these games. So I'll just BS my way through it. You know, I mean, I can do that. <laughs> And, and so I, I looked around and I found this PFF site, which had some color coded different things on there. And, uh, and I just started looking at it. And so I, I typed in at the, at the top of the screen, I was like, you know, who are you guys? You know, I paid my twenty six ninety nine, and, you know, it was good because I'd done a couple of the teams the weeks before. So I checked my notes against theirs. And I'm like, man, this stuff's dead on. Mm-hmm. And these, this was the comments from the coaches that were making it. So I knew that it was right. And, and they were matching up almost perfectly. Mm. So I sent in this, this, you know, comment saying, you know, hey, I love your stuff. Who are you guys? Uh, you know, and I'd already paid my twenty six ninety nine to get in there. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I get a call about three minutes later. I put my phone number about three minutes later from this guy, Neil Hornsby, with a British accent, who comes on. I can't do a British accent, but he, <laughs> <laughs> he, he comes on and he goes, ah, it's Neil Hornsby from Brittany. And I'm like, oh, my, all I could think of son of a gun, this Brit just hustled me out of 2699. <laughs> I swear, that was my first thought when it came to PFF. <laughs> and, and here I am now, you know, six months later, I own the majority share of the company. And now we're in our fifth or sixth year. And we have relationships with every NFL team and 85 or something college teams and a great consumer product that's going gangbuster. So it's really been fun. It's the Bible. I mean, there's no question. Everybody in football at all levels, pro football focus is, is literally the Bible. It's a hell of a story. There's no question. It's been bizarre. I mean, we are literally, I think we're at about 600 employees total. Now, a lot of those are part-time, but wow. I, by the end of the year, we're going to be over a thousand employees really around the world as we're starting to expand into some other things. That's incredible. During the course of your career, Chris, did you ever did you ever think about coaching? I mean, I think you would have been a hell of a coach. I think you would have been a hell of a general manager, ownership. I mean, did you ever think about any of those things during the course of time? Um, a, I never got offered anything, so I probably would have thought about it. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I shouldn't say that. I, I actually did get offered something one time, but hmm. um, you know, it, it care was, to tell us? Give us a little info, huh? Nah, well, <laughs> it, it, it was more of a, if I get a job, would you I got you. Thing? I got you. And I said, well, I, let me think about it. I think about it, but then he never got the job. So, okay. Uh, but that was, that was as close as I came. And, but you know, I, I think at one time I probably would have, Yeah. um, I don't know that I would now, you know, it's, it's kind of, um, unless the Bengals offer you and I a chance to go down there, then we might do that. But let's do it, another, Chris. Let's do it. You know, uh, it, it's a um, you know, I, I think we all have a, a major passion for our hometown team and, yep. and what they're doing and what they're trying to do. And and uh, I, I know with PFF, shoot, if we do anything we can to uh, uh, to help them in any way that we can. Let's talk about the Bengals since we've uh, kind of transitioned there. Joe Burrow and Zach Taylor, you know, in, in the National Football League, that relationship between head coach and quarterback is important, particularly the head coach now as a former quarterback, a play caller, you know, an offensive guru, uh, the quarterback, mm-hmm. a whisperer as such. They're attached at the hip. I mean, the Bengals' future is basically, uh, at this point in time, Joe Burrow and Zach Taylor. What are your thoughts with respect to that? Um, well, I, I, I think we have to see, I, I think the core philosophy is the right one. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
<clears throat> in other words, to, to me, the, the, the reason you run the football, I mean, you know the analytics as well as I do. I mean, the average run play makes four yards. The average pass play, not completion, pass play makes seven yards. Right. So this is just like a three-pointer in basketball. That's why we're seeing all the three-pointers because it's a 50% more than what a two-pointer is. And mm-hmm. so, and these guys are so good, they can shoot it. Yep. So the, the everything is coming down to the passing game now. It really is. And from, the, to me, the main reason you want to run the football in today's NFL is to help the pass projection. Yep. Uh, and, and the right scheme for that is the old Shanahan system, the outside zone, San Francisco 49ers system. I mean, everybody, Green Bay, everybody does it. Where you try to get these defensive linemen running sideways. Uh, in the out in, to play the outside zone and, and stay in their in their uh, you know in their gaps if you will if they're coming through yep. and that's going to slow down the rush and that's going to give your quarterback and your receivers more time to get down the field and that whole thing uh, and all that being said um, it still wasn't enough protection for the Bengals this year mm-hmm. um, so I, I I really feel like that when you have that kind of asset like Joe was and, and Joe was the I, I, I'm really impressed by him I mean I, I talked to some of the Eagles guys after they played Cincinnati and they just could not have been more impressed with some of the hits that he took yep. the fact that he got up um, and, and uh, Brandon Graham told me a story because he got up and he goes it was definitely a borderline late hit <laughs> and and he said, but we crushed him. I mean, you probably remember the play. He got I hit do. one time. So I do. Hard. It was it was it was took your breath away to watch him get yep. hit like that. Yep. And and he said, and he goes, Burrow got up and he looked over at the referee. He didn't throw the flag. And then he came back. And he looked at Brandon. and He goes, you know. When I'm the goat, I'm going to get that call. <laughs> and he said, "Brand," he said, "I almost had to leave the game. I was laughing so hard, yeah. you know." And so I think that's a little bit of what you get. You can see he's a serious-minded kid. Uh, he's, you know, he's tough as nails all year, uh, and I just hope he's the answer. That'd be great. How do you rate him in the group of AFC North quarterbacks, Chris? Obviously, Ben's uh, putting out on seventeen maybe teeing off an 18 or whatever. I mean, he's, he's at the end of twilight of a great career, obviously, but, you know, talking about Baker and Lamar, I mean, how do you, how do you rank uh, the AFC North quarterbacks? Or what do you think about them? Give me a thumbnail sketch of your opinion. Yeah. You know, the interesting thing is that Baker now is in that same team, you know, right. that coming over with the Bansky. So they've got the same exact team going. Yep. Uh, ben, we're going to get a new offense out of them, Randy Feetner is no longer there and they yep. brought in the uh, elevated the quarterback coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course Lamar and that offense but with Greg Roman is completely unique to anything in the National Football League. So I think the comparison really in my mind is going to be to Baker Mayfield yep. uh, at this point. And you know, I, I, I if you watch what happened to Baker, Baker in his first year um, you know, was fantastic comes back in his second year and really does not play very well at all. gets into the system um, and, you know, they start bootlegging and bootlegging left and, you know, slowing down the pass rush and making him more comfortable in the pocket and all that kind of stuff started happening. And hopefully Joe's leg is going to allow him to, to get to that point as well. But as far as just what I saw in the field, and a competitive guy and just, uh, you know, I think he has all of it. I, I really do. I, I, I never met him. I, I've never, you know, had a chance to have a conversation with him, but I just like everything about him. I, I like his demeanor. I like, I like the way he came into the draft. I like the way that, you know, he's handled himself in Cincinnati. He's an Ohio guy. I just hope he's the answer. You know, the thing you'd like about him after I, – I haven't met him, you know, face-to-face, face, but I've observed what he did as a rookie on and off the field. And I think the thing that you and he have in common is both very gifted, talented guys, but also love the grind. I mean, his work ethic is unbelievable. He thrives on the grind. And when you have a great a great player that thrives on the grind, man, you got something special. I, I, think, I think he's going to be – the real deal, I really do. You have to have your best players like that. Yeah. Right? No matter who it is, 
no matter how big a star they are, if your best player is a dog, yep. and there's been plenty of them, then that permeates your locker room and your football team. And and what are you going to do? You can't cut your star player, right? right? So you got to you got to bend the rules. And now everybody's seeing you bend the rules. And once you bend the rules once, yep. you got to bend them all. So, but if your star players are that kind of personality, now you always have a chance. No question. I agree a hundred thousand percent. Give me your thoughts on the Super Bowl 55 matchup. You have old blood, young blood. Um, it's an interesting matchup at quarterback, obviously the biggest disparity age wise in Super Bowl history. What, what else uh, strikes your fancy in terms of the Super Bowl? You know, there's, there's so much to be said for this thing now with, um, with some of the injuries that are happening with the Kansas city chiefs. Yeah. Uh, I just went back and, and watched you know, the slaughter that was the Chiefs beating up on Tampa Bay in that first game. Yeah. But you start going down the offensive line. And obviously, David Bakhtiari not playing for the Green Bay Packers. I didn't think it had a huge impact in that Saints game, but it had a huge impact in in this game. No question. No question. And they just could not pass protect it, right? I mean, they just couldn't. Yep. And so now you're down two starting tackles, uh, assuming that Mitchell Schwartz can't come back and play. Mm-hmm. You're down to uh, Mike Remmers playing for Schwartz, and you're down to whoever uh, playing for Eric Fisher. We'll see how they reshuffle that offensive line. Yep. Uh, but th- there's so many other guys. I mean, remember, their starting guard, Laurent Duvenet, Tardif, is not playing. He opted out yep. to go be a doctor in Canada. Coletio Simley was supposed to be there. At, at one time, there were like six offensive linemen uh, that didn't play. Now, does that matter? I don't know. I mean, can anybody cover Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill? And, you know, we haven't seen anybody yet. And so now, you know, I heard uh, I heard Romo on there going, well, you know, you got to double team this and you got to double team that. And I'm like, yeah. But if you double team Kelsey and you double team Hill, yeah. that only leaves you seven players yeah. to pull around with, right. you know? And, and Can't double everybody. You know, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and that's been the dilemma uh, yep. all year long. And the only team that beat them uh, during the course of the year was the Raiders there. And they hit them with, you know, 70 yard pass plays, which were not really what who the Raiders are. Uh, but it was it was that kind of a day. So you almost get the feeling that Brady is going to have to do something magnificent. And they, they certainly can. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, they're going to have uh, this kid, Stinney, playing guard, is going to have to handle Chris Jones in there. And Chris Jones is a trained killer coming at him. So, no doubt. <laughs> You know, I mean, so to me, I, I watch the inside of, of these games, and I, it's the reason I picked the 49ers last year because that four man rush of the 49ers was as good as any in the league. Yep. Um, and they gave them problems. And it, but for a, a backpedaling, you know, 15, you know, third and 15 throw down the field to Tyree Kill is one of the damnedest plays I've ever seen yeah. in the Super Bowl, they're probably going to beat it. So, yep, yep. you know, to me, that's if Tampa is going to beat them in this game, I think they're going to have to beat them by putting Patrick Mahomes on his back. And, and that's, that's a difficult thing because this guy, I mean, even with the turf toe and the, you know, the titanium plate in his uh, shoe and everything to immobilize his left big toe, he's, he's creative, he's slippery. You don't get a clean hit on him. He's like Gumby. I mean, guys are wrapping around his waist, and he's throwing sidearm down the field completions. It, it's unbelievable to watch this guy play quarterback. I mean, he's so creative in, in the way he extends and creates plays and, and, and eliminates pressure a little bit. You know, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. It is. 